Tom Dare. I'm Derek. And this, this is, is the Double B Podcast. Podcast. No table in front of us. We're right. a whole new room. Uh, funny story, I actually changed my podcast room from a smaller room in my apartment to a bigger room. And then today, Darren texts me and says, hey, let's do it at my place. So all that work was done for nothing for this first podcast. So now we're doing it in a completely new room. No table in front of us. But the green screen does look nice. I kind of like the no table. I kind of do too. Maybe we should get a no table. kind of like it. I don't yeah. know. No table. idea maybe in the future. I don't mm-hmm. know. I don't know because when we get to there, when we get back to your place, we may like the table. Maybe. Well, <laughs> you know what? For now, we're rolling with no table for sure. But that's not what we're We're not here to talk about tables. What we're here to talk about is Sunman Showdown. Ah, chairs. I don't have my fancy chair. You don't have your fancy chair. Yeah, you know, I watched the last <laughs> podcast. There's just a lot of squeaking chairs and chair noises. I know, it keeps me moving. Both of us are just moving. Around. So maybe we need to not move around so much when we do these podcasts. These people are here to listen about, to hear reviews of matches that they either did get to see or didn't get to see. They're not here to hear squeaky chair noises. Mm-hmm. But you like your squeaky chair, I get it. All right, but we're moving on. We'll just put some oil on. Sunman Showdown, May 18th. Now, this was a special show for us because yes. I grew up in Sunman. And I grew, I grew up, up just on the outside of Sunman. I, I lived for quite a while right on the outside of Sunman and then in the heart of Sunman, which isn't a very big town, but, you know, I was very excited to see Sunman Showdown. I, I didn't never... If you would have told me, like, two years ago when we started working with Battle on the Border that they would be doing a show in Sunman, I would have told you that you're crazy. But it turns <laughs> out that it's true. Yeah. They came to the train station. It was a great time. There were a lot of people there. If you missed it, you missed out. I know for a lot of the fans, it's probably a pretty decent drive. For us, this was the closest show we've ever Oh, yeah, it was kind of nice. I could have walked if I wanted to. I didn't, but I could have. It was that close. So that was nice. And hopefully, Battle on the Border will go back next year and the year after and the year after and just keep just building. Keep it as a regular show. Keep it growing. I think it was a great time. If you guys went, make sure you guys tell us how it went. Yeah, how'd you feel? I mean, it was nice being so close. Oh, yeah, it was nice being this close. And um, I didn't really see anybody I knew. Surprisingly. I didn't like, either. As far as, like, school with or anything like that. I know, it was disappointing. As far as I'm sure, there's plenty of locals that went. It was a great show. I mean, if you were in the Sunman area, you got to see all the posters uh, mm-hmm. that somebody put up. Who knows who that was? Mm-hmm. Uh, definitely wasn't me or anything. I don't know, man. <laughs> you have a suspicion. Uh, so, I have sneaking suspicion that it may have possibly been you. It may have. I, don't know. I may have hung one or two. Um, Maybe. No, but it was a great show. And normally speaking, yeah, we usually have to drive like 45 minutes to yeah. a show. This one was really close for us. So it was great. I think the second closest is usually Morris Hill. Morris Hill, yeah, because we're out of Indiana, for those who don't know. So yeah. all the, even Cleves, the, the next show's at Cleves. That's a pretty decent haul for us. Although I love Cleves. That's my personal, my favorite Yeah, that's, place that's my favorite place for shows. Where they do shows. So I'm excited, though. Let's talk about some of the showdown. Um, like I said, great crowd, great action, and there was a lot to deep on, on pack here. It was a really awesome show to see. But we're going to start it off with the returning Matthew Taylor. Haven't seen him in a while, and he was going to be taking on Dirty Daxi. Now, something did happen in this match that was kind of shocking, was that Matthew Taylor was accompanied to the ring by Ryan Freeman. Now, Ryan Freeman mm-hmm. is, of course, a part of Kickdoor, Kickdoor Promotions. Now, the question is... This is very exciting. The second show now, though, that Kickdoor Promotions haven't really been together i mean we saw it in clarksville ryan freeman and casey clay showed up with no russell yeah. this time ryan freeman's walking out with matthew taylor i have to ask you because you're kind of like the kick door promotions expert as far as i know and you're a big fan of theirs i think you're kind of a part of it in a way <laughs> you're, you're definitely I pushing wish. their propaganda That'd be awesome if i was what's going on with kick door promotions i mean is obviously ryan Fre- is ryan freeman and kick door promotion are they done what's going on you know i'm not real sure i've, I've noticed that yeah, Russell hasn't been there. I don't know. Maybe he's busy managing somebody else, so he enlisted somebody else to kind of lead. Ryan Freeman's kind over of over battle on the border. Maybe for a little Recruiting. while, or yeah, could be. Maybe recruiting. wanted Ryan Freeman to uh, walk out and deal with that part of it. Help out Matthew Taylor. Mm-hmm. Mutual, mutual I mean, agreement between. They them. don't have really too much competition, so he's probably going to. They kind of align themselves in the same way, I feel like. They kind of do the same things. Yeah. You know, they kind of align themselves. I don't know. It's interesting because, like I said, two it's, shows. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. I, yeah, I'm hoping to see Russell back soon. Yeah. But. <laughs> I mean, I hope he comes back with a clear, with a, with a conscious that's a, like, no more bats. We're not going to use the bats anymore. We're not going to, like, interfere. Maybe that's what he's doing. He's going, on, he's going on that Ro- Aaron Rodgers, like, reclusion camp. He's going to go and he's sitting, he's sitting in a cave and, and trying to get his head right and, and, and Maybe doing ayahuasca or something. That's what Dan Rogers was doing. Was ayahuasca. 
It is a uh, psychedelic mushroom. Yeah, Ask Aaron Rodgers. Scoop. We'll save that for another podcast. I'm saying, we'll I'm research saying, it. I'm saying, no, what I'm saying is I just hope that he's, when he when he does come back, I hope that he's seen the light. But of course, so Russell. So it's psychedelic. You hope he comes back on drugs? No, I didn't say that. No, 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 no. I hmm. said, I said. That's that I a little hope, weird. I said, he, I hope he just comes up with hmm. a clear conscience and isn't using weapons. So doing drugs is going to get you a clear conscience. That's conscience. not what I said. I was just using that as an example for what people know. Aaron Rodgers. It was a joke, dude. Yeah, Don't. Very nice. Next Next time Russell runs into me, he's going to beat me up now. You see, you see it's going to be funny. No, he'll have Jake do it. <laughs> nah, dude, Jake, uh, Jake made me sit on the floor. No, but I was interested in this. Matthew Taylor coming out because, I mean, it's weird seeing Matthew Taylor with Ryan. Fr- I, it's, if you're Matthew Taylor, I don't know what, if there were, like you said, if there was an agreement. I don't know if backstage Ryan Freeman and Matthew dude, Taylor just made Matthew agreement. Taylor is joining Kickdoor Promotions, that is going to be epic. If he, but is Matthew <laughs> Taylor recruiting Ryan Freeman? Away from Kickdoor Promotions. I mean, at this point, you no. have to wonder. Two shows in a row now that kick, uh, that Russell hasn't been there. Kickdoor Promotions hasn't been a group, and we know because we do the sound. They didn't come out to Kickdoor Promotions music. No. Ryan Freeman later on in the show, which we'll get to his match later on, he didn't even come out to Kickdoor. From, so it's like one of those things. Casey Clay last show in Clarksville didn't come out to Russell's music. It's one of those things where it's like, is Kickdoor Promotions maybe? And they were on, on such a high. I mean, at one point they had the Zero Gravity Champion. They had the wit two women's competitors that were destined to be champions at some point, and now it's just slowly but surely unraveling for Kickdoor. Yeah, I don't think so. I mean, I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering. It's interesting to think. I think it's still there. They're just maybe taking a little bit of a break. I think, like you said, that. I think it's a good, uh, good observation. And like I said, this is why I asked you because you said that maybe Russell was out managing somebody else. It's possible Russell's out mm-hmm. recruiting for Kickdoor. I yeah. mean, that's, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, he's got a big job on his hands. We heard him, we, we asked him about people he was interested in. He said he's looking all over. Mm-hmm. So it's very possible that, you know what he said, instead of the Aaron Rodgers reclusion, like I said, coming back on drugs. I did not say drugs. <laughs> yeah, it was just an Aaron Rodgers joke. <laughs> it, was just an, it was just an Aaron Rodgers reference. Maybe he's out this guy. recruiting. He wants people to do drugs. I did not. No, I didn't say that. I didn't say I wanted you to do I said that Aaron Rodgers. Drugs are bad. Aaron Rodgers <laughs> wants you to do them, not me. I don't. <laughs> that's on him. Drugs are bad. My point is is that maybe he's out recruiting instead. That it's would good be. good thing we listen to not super kids. Well, I, I didn't say the duel. <laughs> I, said broken. That, I said Aaron Rodgers <laughs> wants you to do them. Is that uh, that bad? Anyway. me the bad guy. My point is, <clears throat> is that. <clears throat> my point is, is that no Russell, but. But. Getting back to the source of this, the match. Matthew Taylor yeah, let's get to the did have important parts. Yeah, did have on his side Ryan Freeman. And Matt Taylor, Matthew Taylor is a is a fantastic competitor in the ring. Um, and having Ryan Freeman at his back, mm-hmm. that's huge. I mean, that's always going to be huge. Uh, he's taking on Dirty Daxi. Now, Dirty Daxi had a really impressive match at Night of Champions. Uh, or no, I'm, I'm sorry, not Night of Champions. Uh, no, it wasn't Night of Champions. Or was yeah. it New Year's Eve Bash where he took on Justin Xavier? Point yeah. is, the last time we saw him in Battle on the Border... I think it was at Night of Champions. It was Matthew Taylor, or it was Dirty Dax versus Justin Xavier for the Zero Gravity. Justin Xavier got the win, but it was a very impressive showing by Dirty Dax since being gone. He was gone for a while before that point. Yeah, he's pretty good at backflips. Yeah, good, pretty good at backflips. Oh, you, you gave Dirty <laughs> Dax, you gave Dirty Dax some 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 props. Yeah, he's pretty good at backflips. Oh, look at that. I've seen that man do too many backflips. I'd be dizzy. <laughs> I'd be dizzy. Well, anyway, so yeah, so this match, Matthew Taylor, Dirty Dax, it was a great match. Uh, a lot of back and forth action, and with that added Ryan Freeman distraction for Dirty Daxi on the outside, definitely had to play into his mind. Uh, Matthew Taylor, of course, as normal, tries to get Dirty Daxi to join him. Uh, never works. You know, I wonder if Matthew Taylor has thought about maybe not asking people to join him. One day, somebody will join him. You keep saying that, but I don't. Well, Ryan Freeman, maybe. Maybe that's <laughs> like Ryan Freeman. Freeman maybe maybe you know. talk to him in the locker room and say, "Hey, if you join me, join me, my child." And Ryan uh-huh. Freeman said, "Yes, yes." See, I will. maybe somebody finally joined him. Maybe he did. See, that's what I'm saying. It's so there's a lot of interesting <laughs> stuff going on. Uh, this was a great matchup back and forth. And of course, you know that Matthew Taylor brings a book out with mm-hmm. him. Uh, the guy. I'm still not sure what's in that book. I don't know if you're meant to know. I mean, it's the gospel of wrestling of some sort. I'm sure. I'm sure. I've heard him read from it. Yeah, he said he's always reading from it. I, I just think it's just it was just wisdom. I think he's just trying to get you to join. It's like uh, the the wrestling, for lack of a better term, Bible. You know. Oh. I think I don't know. I, we'll have to ask Matthew. Sounds Taylor. like it'd be a pretty cool book. Maybe we'll interview Matthew Taylor and ask him uh, what's in the book. But the point is, is that this was a this was a fantastic matchup, and this goes a long way into deciding maybe who will see the Zero Gravity tournament. You know, who who next? I mean, Matthew Taylor. Yeah. Maybe well, he'll be next. There's a lot of candidates for that. 
It's one of the most stacked divisions <laughs> in Battle on the Border for sure. I would say they're definitely not lacking on zero gravity, that is for sure. No, if you love high flying, and we have a huge announcement about that at the end of the show, so stick around for that. What's going to happen in Cleves for the zero gravity title? Make sure you're sticking around, you don't want to miss it. But this was a good matchup, but with the added distraction on the outside, with the book being involved, it was too much for Dirty Daxi to overcome, and Matthew Taylor did get a victory. So, I mean... Which I anticipated. Of course you did. I was I was pulling for Dirty Daxi. We literally have a pin of him in the normal studio that we have. A pin? We have a little pin, a little Dirty Daxi, a Daxi Taxi pin. I've never seen that before in my life. I think, I think he bought it. No, I would never buy anything from Dirty Daxi. I think he bought it, guys. I think he bought it. This is before. This is before you. I do have a kick door sticker. You do have. A I need another one. I need a kick door sticker. I need Russell to come back. Russell, come back. <laughs> come back. Sir. You can get a kick stick. door sticker. I don't have to buy a sticker. I want a big one. I wonder if he can get me one the size of my windshield. Like a decal, like they have yeah. in like the NASCAR cars. I'll buy one of them from him. Hey, <laughs> that'd be this pretty cool. This guy will buy a whole car. <laughs> cool. Just wrap your car in kick door promotions. Oh, that'd be a good car promotion wrap. scheme. Promotion scheme. See, we got him. Scheme. He's scheming over there. Amy's <laughs> <He's> scheming. <laughs> um, no, but this was a great matchup, but unfortunately, I mean, luckily, depending on who you are and how you feel, I hope that that, I think that that's going to blend into the green screen, and that's going to be funny. <laughs> you just see me drink the screen? I don't know if you guys are seeing this or not, because obviously green screen's post-production, but Darren is holding a green bottle that I just now realized. It's a can. Can. It's a Red Bull can. I, I would just, I uh, just. You can't just pop them like that when we got Dubby Energy it's a dub, on the it's thing. A, it's a Dubby can. <laughs> Darren doesn't drink. He's a bad guy. He doesn't drink Dubby. He doesn't listen. That might just blend into the green screen. Just That'd be pretty cool, though. Wow. You drink every time. It just, battle on the border. It's going to be just floating there. I just now realized. Oh, no. All right. Well, we're. So, all right. That's enough of that. That's enough. The floating cans. All right. Great matchup. But what do you think is next for Matthew Taylor? Zero gravity is on his mind. World heavyweight championship on his mind. What's on his mind? You know Matthew Taylor. I wish I did. Um, I don't know. He's a confusing one. That's for sure. I mean, you root for him is what I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not sure what. Um, I don't know. I don't know what to expect. I, I would assume he'd go for the zero gravity again. I mean, it's possible. I mean, it's possible. He's more than capable of getting it. Yeah. So for sure. For I don't sure. know. I just. He leaves you wondering. He's, a, he's an interesting one. Yeah. Matthew Taylor. And now with Ryan Freeman possibly being by his side, I mean, that could open up doors a lot. I mean, tag he's, team. He's also a little Who bit knows? hard to read. Yeah, he is. Because, he, like you said, he, I mean, he's done it all. He, he's taken on for the World Heavyweight title. He's mm -hmm. he's went after the Zero Gravity Championship. So, I mean. I mean, he pretty much sky's the limit for him. It really is. Really is. I mean, who knows? He may try and get into the hardcore. <laughs> who knows? At this point with him, I mean, it really does, it really is hard to tell. Moving on, we had two debuting ladies in Battle on the Border, Madison Payne and Lucy B. Sweet. We talked about it on the last podcast about how we did not want to pledge our allegiance to anybody because we didn't really know anything about these ladies. We were mm -hmm. super excited to learn the women's division. Oh, for sure. I, I'm speaking, I think, for the fans here on this one as well. Ladies' division for a while was definitely a lacking point in Battle on the Border. It seemed like at one point there wasn't a lot of action going on it wasn't a lot of matches that like were different well, it seemed there, like it was there slow were, there really wasn't a lot um a lot of ladies in that division and now the division is growing rapidly i mean we we i think venom I mean, said like there's like nine women in the division I, say, I think well now last point. year we had like what maybe four or five maybe if even that i mean it, it's really had storm Yeah, Sebastian was, wasn't on yet. Right, so we, we only had like so, three or four. So yeah, like we've been super over. Yeah, super super over. So we had like three or four. Yeah, and so now, I mean, now the fact that we're at that high is wild. To almost nine now, which and is what I was wondering for a while. I was wondering like, man, what what's them going to do about the women's division? It's kind of like dwindling. Well, there's we, not very many competitors on it. We figured out what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah, and the answer is build it. Yeah, and he's built it. He's built it rapidly. Very I mean, good. Now we have Alexis Littlefoot, Sebastian Lashawn, as you said, mm -hmm. Madison Payne, Lucy B. Sweet, uh, Casey Clay, Storm Garcon, Sean Reed's the champion. I yep. mean, there's so many women in this. Uh, not to mention Bashley Bones. I mean, there's so many. So I almost forgot about her. I know. Well, yeah, we haven't seen her in a couple of shows. Yeah. It's been, it's just grown very rapidly. The only bad thing is, so it's great for us fans, but the only bad thing is for these competitors that join the the, the division is that it's stacked now. There's I mean, more competition. If you would have joined yeah. it last year, maybe you would have won a match and see yourself up at the top. Now it's a little bit tougher. And Madison Payne and Lucy B. Sweet, they're getting thrown into the thick of it. Two ladies who, you know, debuting. Now, I tell you what, Madison Payne can hold her own. Madison Payne is, is for sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, she's <laughs> she's from the mean streets of Britain. I almost said British. No, the mean streets of Britain. She had a British accent. I've never met anyone with a British accent before. That's pretty crazy. 
and she was taking on Lucy B. Sweet. Now, I very quickly figured out that Lucy B. Sweet was is actually sweet. You know, we talked about it the last podcast, Lucy B. Sweet, that sometimes means that you're not sweet. <laughs> it doesn't mean you are sweet. She is sweet, maybe a little too sweet, because Madison Payne did take care of business and got the victory. Her, her name's Payne for a reason. Madison Payne, she brought the pain. Mm -hmm. It was a great matchup. It was, it was, I don't want to say that it was a quick match, to be honest with you. I don't think Lucy yeah. B. Sweet maybe necessarily expected what she got out of Madison no, I Payne. Don't, I don't think so, because, I mean, yeah, it was pretty, uh, it was the quickest match. It was almost like she was thrown off guard. She was. I mean, there was a couple times where she actually left the, the, the ring to mm -hmm. gather herself. I think Lucy BC was kind of thrown off at Madison Payne. I think maybe let the size, the, the shortness of, of Madison Payne get into her head because Madison Payne's a little bit shorter than uh, Lucy B. Sweet is. Maybe that was what it was. Maybe it's just her age because she's she's young. Maybe yeah. that was it. I don't know what it was, but she got thrown off guard, obviously. I don't know. Lucy B. Sweet she seems like she's pretty young, too. Yeah, I'm not taking so, away from... I'm not sure what, what really would have thrown her off. I'm not taking away from mm -hmm. Madison Payne either when I say that. I think mind games the, the 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 mind part of wrestling though does could be like what are the competitors thinking and i mean madison Payne is a great competitor i'm not saying that it was a fluke victory at all but what i'm just saying is that maybe she, lucy b Swing was thrown off a little bit and that helped her yeah, hand is all i I'm can saying. see that but it was a fantastic matchup between oh, those two great match i didn't like you said i didn't know what to expect you know and of course you're a fan of madison Payne because madison Payne. She has a little bit of an attitude. She inflicted the pain, though, she didn't she? inflicted the pain. She has a little bit of an attitude, which I know you love. So, with Shauna Reed being champion, I mean, in the women's division, as we said, is stacked. How you long know, do you think, though, it would take for Madison Payne to get into a title shot? I don't know. That's... I mean, there's a hub, up, there's uphill battle with that. There's so many women now. But she's definitely set herself on the right track. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. Victory is mean, always important. She could definitely move her way that way. But yeah. there's also a bunch of really good really talented, talented ladies that she yeah. has to compete against and i'm sure she'll run into a challenging point at some point i mean lucy I mean, b lucy b sweet gave her a challenge i mean this was her battle on the border debut right yeah battle on the border that debut. was both of their battle battle on the border debuts right yeah debuts for both so and hey lucy b sweet i mean if you follow battle on the border bashley bones was uh she she got a loss in her debut in battle on the border and then bounced back with a victory against yep. casey clay so i mean in fact that was actually the last time that we saw Russell. Yeah. Was when Casey hit him in the face with the mirror, I believe, right? Yes. No, no. No, no. no it was after that. After that, when yeah. Jake Shepard came back and turned on, and turned on, the whole. Uh, the, the point is, you sound a little frustrated. I love no, no, because if Kick George watching, I don't want him to be. Did you that? I didn't say that, but I what said. I just so I I gotta love, watch myself. He stops himself because he's say he's gonna say I love Kick door promotion. No, I gotta watch myself sometimes because I gotta remember who put me on this on the floor. That was funny. So I bet that it was. was funny. I bet it was. <laughs> like, hey, you know what was hey, funny? You know what was uh, funny? Hey. You know what was funny? You're on the flow. Watching you be so squirmish around Sergeant Ledbetter when you inducted him into our Hall of Fame. That was funny. Hey, I didn't have to sit on the floor. No, but you know, I'm surprised. <laughs> I was hoping that he would. But unfortunately, he was in a bit of a, you know, there's a lot of stuff he's got going on. He was in a good mood. He's got new boots. He did get new boots. <laughs> he was in a good mood. <laughs> anyway, I mean, listen, Lucy B. Sweet can't be too hard on her, can't be too hard on herself. She bounce back that's mm -hmm. important and Madison Payne though she is on the way to being potentially the next big you know women's star like I said tough competition for sure but I mean great debut to start off moving on next she couldn't have won any better literally couldn't <laughs> have won any better I mean I don't know how else it could have won it was an, it was an exciting debut for her for sure moving on we have the returning DD trash now DD trash hasn't been around in a while uh, Ron Mathis has been. He was in the BBI, the uh, Brandon Blevins Invitational with the Hardcore yeah. uh, Division uh, with, the, with that with that uh, tournament. Uh, to, he took on uh, Aaron Gunn and, and, and Hooks. Uh, came up uh, short, obviously. He's not yeah. a, a Hardcore Champion. But he did put on a very impressive showing. His partner, Bruce Gray, is finally back after suffering some shoulder. He actually made his return at Night of Champions in the uh, Battle Royal. But the Battle Royal is so quick. You could have missed, you know, they were in the yeah. ring for a while, but you maybe you, you missed them. So this is the first time we've seen them back together in yes, tag team action tag team. since. Which is another division that is it's slowly up coming in the air, up. Like what? <laughs> it's slowly coming up. I mean, I feel like you know we've had some injuries in the tag team division uh, with Jeremiah and the Bad Dudes being 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 uh, injured, and now with Bruce Gray being injured. I mean, we've had That's, some injuries. I hope to see the Bad Dudes back soon. That would be. That would throw a wrench in everybody's plans. Exactly. Not to mention Bomani walking out on Surge, retiring on Surge, basically, because he lost that triple threat. So the tag team division is kind of in an upheaval right now where the champions 
they're kind of just they're running uncontested to put it into pretty good perspective. So this would be a huge match for well, you. You gotta trash. remember who the champions are. I mean, they're the bad. They're the baddest men on the on the roster, in my opinion. Matt yeah. Bolden, Congo Kong. I mean, just to think Spectre. they're gonna walk in and just take it from them two dudes. Yeah, well, not gonna happen. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm not one to bring up things from the past. But Sir Jam Bomani did technically beat them for the tag team championships. Um, Nick said no. And then Nick said no. Apparently, referees can just come from the back <laughs> and just change stuff. I mean, I don't know why that doesn't happen other times. And this time, it seems like Nick maybe has something out for Sir Jam Bomani at this point. I Nick don't know. said no. He's seen it. Put that on a t-shirt. Nick said no. <laughs> Nick said no. That'd be well, awesome. I, I like it. Actually, <laughs> for real though, no. that's a good idea for a shirt. Picture of him. Doing a rep, like pointing or something, and then Nick says no on it. That's there you perfect. Go, Nick. Nick, if you're watching, one ten percent. Yeah, we want some cut of it, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool though. I think Nick said no. I'd buy one. He's one of my favorite referees. I mean, the TV has a lot of great referees. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick, referee Ryan, referee uh, Nick Wiggins, Nick Barney, all these referees. I mean, there's a lot of great referees. Um, and they don't even know which Nick we're referring to. <laughs> right, 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 right. It was Nick word. Barney we were talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Iron Man. Iron Man Nick. Iron Man Nick. Uh, anyway, point is tag. We're not here doing our free reviews. We're doing a review of Shunman. Shunman. Sunman Shunman. Shunman. You're from there and you ain't even pronounce it. DD Trash made Sunman trashy. Er. <laughs> Been working on that one for a couple of days. Uh, <laughs> no, I love Sunman. I'm not, I'm not supposed to be saying stuff like that. I was um, say, what the fuck? I'm from Sunman. Uh, it's just a joke, you know? When you come from Sunman, you have to learn how to... Because everyone else makes jokes about it. So that's, yeah. that's fair. DD right. Trash, though, did make Sunman trashy because that's what they do. That's, they, they take pride in it. Uh, fun fact, DD Trash... My parents were at the event. My dad has been to a couple events. My mom, mm -hmm. this was her first one. My mom, instantly, she said DD Trash was her favorites. Loved, the, loved not only the match, but them themselves. And they were taking on a new tag team, Tyler Osborne and Tony Marks. Now, I, do, I did have a couple of different names written down. I don't know how... This really works. I've seen Vapor Wave Rats. Uh, Rick Tom said something different when they came out. To be honest with you, I don't really know what their names were. And I apologize for that. There I was, don't either. There was like three yeah, different multiple names. Multiple different names. Yeah, there was yeah, like three different names said. I don't know. I mean, that's how good of a tag team these guys are, I guess, is that they have so many different names because they're so good. I don't know. But anyway, the point is, is that they are taking on DD Trash. DD Trash did get the victory. Now, as we said before, for DD Trash, and by the way, this was a great matchup. I mean, at one point, Ron Mathis, I believe it was, jumped into the chairs. They set one of the guy, one of Tyler Osborne or Tony Marks into the chairs and jumped mm -hmm. into him. I mean, it was a wild match. You know what DD Trash does? They never disappoint. I believe that they could wrestle mops and make it an unbelievable match. That's how talented these guys are. I really do wrestle a mop. They could wrestle a mop, and it would be entertaining. They're just entertaining people. I one of my favorite tag teams. People would be laughing how stupid I am. Well, that, that's the difference, though. <laughs> DD Trash, they work well together. They get the crowd involved. Like I said, my mom immediately became fans of them. But like I said, though, DD Trash gets the victory here. How I think DD Trash, with this win, with how scarce the competition truly is in the tag team division as of this moment, because and again, like I said, bad dude's coming back, hopefully soon from injury. Uh, I don't know what the future holds for some of the other teams, but I think... D Trash might have just lined themselves up for a tag title opportunity. I mean, if you're looking at it in that direction, yeah, but they also haven't wrestled tag team for a minute also. That's also true. I'm just saying. So, I mean, like, well, I, I guess with the one tag team back that's, that was injured, um, yeah, I mean, they could always shoot for a title shot. I mean, outside of I don't of know that, if they will right off the rip, though. I mean, will they want to get injured again? I mean, since New Year's Eve <laughs> bash, we haven't seen a tag team... that We haven't seen the tag team champions at all. That's fair. That's and fair. now we see a tag team that I think could easily... I don't. I shouldn't say easily, but they, they pose a very good threat to Spectre Enterprises. I'm not yeah. saying that that's a match that's going to happen yet. I'm just saying that I think that they're, they, they probably have eat themselves up into the tag team rankings to possibly and by the way you're injured again i heard that comment these guys are made of glass bruce gray puts his body on the line and he separated his shoulder that is just because he's a hardcore he's not literally a, well he probably does hardcore too he's crazy he's i mean he's i wouldn't crazy. want to face some big dudes i would well that's a good point though that's a good point <laughs> i'd be injured that's a good point and hey listen dd trash the last time we saw them fully healthy was back in like august 
It was against the bad dudes who were at the ball fields. And they were remember they ran from the from the home run line all the way to the oh singing, yeah. I remember this Pompano Joe. <laughs> like these guys were super entertaining to watch. And I'm not saying that. Listen, what well, was a foot race? Yeah, there was a, yeah 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 there was a foot race. I mean, listen, <laughs> I think DD Trash could easily be tag team champion, great tag team champions. Now I know you're a Spectre Enterprise guy, even though you have in the past called Spectre. Uh, David Barnum Spectre, an asshole, I believe, was the exact words you used. But I now I've never used that language on this podcast. I think you did. There's kids that watch this. But ne- well, there shouldn't probably. I earlier made an Aaron Rodgers ayahuasca joke. Well, so I, but I think we said it for not safe for kids, anyways. My point is, though, <laughs> is that I just think that Congo Kong and, and, and you know, they're wa- Mammy and Bolt need to watch their back now. And air quotes put in their place. I think that if there's anybody who can put David Spector, Barnaby Spector in his place, it could be D.D. Trash. I can agree with that. I think that. That's what I, I think that can give them a chance. I mean, I think Serge and Bomani could have, they did, and then Nick said no. Uh, Nick said no. Nick said no. <laughs> put it on the shirt. <laughs> uh, no, this is a great match. I, who knows what the future holds for D.D. Trash. Hopefully, I think it's slowly becoming a tag team title opportunity. Oh, for sure. It's definitely about due for a tag team. Somebody go for the title. That's what I'm saying. It's been a while. That's, for a while. that's what I'm saying. Moving on to match number four, we have Ryan Freeman taking on Jeff King. Now, Jeff King was the local hero. Well, so yeah, if I'm not mistaken, Jeff King was from Milan? Milan, Indiana, which, which was, is right down the road. For those that don't know, is like a 15, not even, 10, 15 minute drive from Sunman. Uh, he brought the fans, man. The fans were in love with Jeff King. Uh, and I get it. Jeff King is super entertaining to watch. It was his first match in 15 years. If I'm not mis- obviously, it's his first match in Battle on the Border. It's his debut in Battle on the Border. Yeah. Uh, but he has a tall order coming up with against Ryan Freeman. Coming up against Ryan Freeman here. I mean, oh yeah, that's definitely a challenge. And, and in a hardcore division, Ryan Freeman. You know, we saw him in the Brandon Blevins Invitational as well. He took on Hooks. I think, I think, this is a tough order for Jeff King going into this matchup. I'm thinking. This is tough. 15 years. I was impressed on how he held his own. But that's what I was going to say is that when the match, the first off when the match started, you had Matthew Taylor came out along with. Mm-hmm. Matthew Taylor gets thrown out of the of the match. Denim said, you know what? We're not messing around with this, in, you know, interference and all this. Beat. Which I think is bull crap. Why? How should he get to decide? Because he, that's what he does. He makes the decisions. Oh yeah, yeah. Then why is he? Get, all the managers are allowed to come out. Well, in this Bobby match, Fulton's allowed to come out with um, Paxton. How comes Matthew Taylor couldn't come out? Oh yeah. Well, what about all the times that? Well, you you don't like Bobby Fulton though. You don't want him to be out there. I know. Maybe this is just denim. Maybe just this, everybody needs to because you knew it was going to happen. If you knew it was going to happen. All, Matthew Taylor was going to get involved. If one happens, it all should happen. You knew Matthew That's Taylor was going to get involved. Under cheating. No, he's not. Matthew Taylor was going to get involved, and you know that. You know that for a fact. Because that's what he would have done. It, but a hard corner, there was no he, rules. He is all about love and peace. So. It's hard to argue with that because he, he does say that. It's not true, but he does say that. But uh, Jeff King did it even without Matthew Taylor. Still had a tall order up, excuse me, up against him. Now, he did have the crowd on his side, which we talked about before, how big of, a, of an advantage that is to have the crowd on your side. Um, but, unfortunately for Jeff King, it wasn't enough to no, overcome Ryan short. Freeman. Uh, to be, in fact, uh, he got choked out. He, oh, got, he, he, fell he, he fell a little short. Yeah, he got choked out. Uh, listen, I didn't hear time, much from the fans when that happened. That is so rude. Because most of those people there, some of his fans, not all of them, but some of the fans there were related to him. You just choked a man out in front of his family. Look at you smiling. <laughs> That's terrible. This guy is a terrible man. He's laughing at that. Well, how would you feel if you got choked out in front of your family? I would laugh just like I did. <laughs> because just, expected in wrestling. <laughs> I'm, I mean, listen, I'm not saying it was against the rules. I'm not saying it was dirty. It wasn't with the rules. I'm just saying it sucks for Jeff King. But, hey, 15 well, any years. any loss sucks for wrestlers. I mean, it still go against, goes against them either way. Yeah. <laughs> 15 years, I'm just saying, after 15 years, he put up a really tough fight, man. There were some chair shots in this thing that made me made me feel like I got hit by a chair. They were so hard. I was. Yeah, they definitely did not look like they felt good. No, they didn't look like they felt. I don't think anything looks good. Anything <laughs> these guys don't look good, but those specifically. I mean, I've seen tough. like I've seen like where they couldn't get a full swing and just got a weak swing. I seen it where 
tap their forward and end the warm their taps. No, those were not some taps. Those were full on I don't like you swims. <laughs> so we were looking back at I can't remember what one it was. But it went hit him with the chair and <laughs> barely tapped them with the chair. You know, because they were out of like um I can't remember if they were close enough or if they were far or what it was, but it was the front of your neck. Some people aren't some people aren't just Okay with swinging full bore into another human, a chair. That well, takes I mean, a special kind of anyways, but it, it, was a clear, kind of crazy it was clearly an accident that they didn't swing you it so it. hard because no, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, it was you heard intended. that. You heard that. I never thought I didn't even hear that. You were the accident. I well, you're the oldest. Technically speaking, I guess I was. <laughs> you're the <really>, oopsie. Uh, <laughs> listen, I want to hear it. I was just a middle child. I was playing. Ryan, <laughs> listen, it, it's not again. This podcast is not about us. Ryan Freeman, Jeff King. It was a great oh, matchup, it? hardcore match. What do you think about this? Now, see, you're not. See, here's you know, the thing. It puts I'm, you in a tough space because we're going to talk about Amos later because he's in the main event here. You know, I don't even have anything to say about that dude. Well, we'll get into that. Later, but my point is, is that he's holding the hardcore title, calling it the Pure Championship. Ryan Freeman gets a victory here in the hardcore division. Denim's still calling it the hardcore division. It's not the pure division, despite what Barnabas Specter said that night, uh, and despite what Amos has been saying since. What do you think? Is, I mean, Ryan Freeman might be slowly eking up to potentially getting a hardcore division or a hardcore title match. Pure I hardcore, think, pure champion. I think he should, but you got to keep the champion in the building before you can do that. That's the tough part. He does run a lot. Now, we, we talked about this about how you were a big Amos fan, which I can't. I don't know how that is rooting against Denim and rooting for Amos. You know, I, I don't, I don't know now. But now you're slow because of the running. I don't like that. Well, will he be able to run against Paxton? We'll find out later. Man, I'm gonna start calling. I'm gonna refer to him as Forrest from now on. Forrest. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, he kind of is that. But uh, I think Ryan Freeman might be slowly. And listen, Jeff King. You know, I hope that Jeff King recovers from this. You know, he had a tough had a tough match. I hope so, too, because he's going to be busy. Well, we'll get into that later. We'll <laughs> I'm into saying that he's going to be busy. But it was tough. He did get choked out in front of his family, which is never a good thing. But, hey, it was a tough match. First match in 15 years. I can't believe you're laughing at that. 15 years, though, it was a hell of a, a hell of an effort for Jeff King. And I'm excited to see him more in Battle of the Board. Because as of the day that we're talking uh, about this, we do know that he is going to be scheduled to show up at Legends and All-Stars coming up at the end of June here. Uh, yep. So that's exciting, but we'll get into that later. Uh, but yeah, Ryan Freeman to get the victory here, and I think slowly but surely. I don't know if he's a part of Kickdoor Promotions. I don't know if he's Matthew Taylor's guy now. I don't know what's going on with him, but I think he might be getting close to a hardcore division uh, matchup. And I mean, I listen, hope so. That'd be cool. It could be. And now, listen, he hardcore. is off of some losses. You got to keep that in mind. But that was a hard. That was in the hardcore or the heavyweight division rather against Sergeant Leather. <coughs> the was about Sharp to say, that was, was a there. different. Now that was a whole here. thing. Maybe Amos we'll is get next. Start on that one. Yeah, we we heard you. We heard you. <laughs> don't, don't even get me started on that one. That was a whole thing. And that loss shouldn't even count it. Here we go. Why? Because the sharp boy. Yes. He was calling it down the middle, um, right down the middle. I'm sure he was. Okay. Well, next up in don't the. Talk about cheaters. Next up in the night was Party Mike, <laughs> one of my favorites, taking on Cody Travers, the debuting Cody Travers. We don't really know much about yeah, Cody Travers. Yeah, I don't Travers, know a lot about him. But all you have to know really is Something that he's about him. I like. <laughs> that's all I really that's, that speaks for itself really. <laughs> that, that, about him I was gonna I, like. I was gonna say all you have to say about him is that he said he was gonna uh, end the party earlier but you know so that that is all you have to know about him he does not like party Mike um I like party Mike what's your what do you your take on party Mike you used uh, to like party Mike's he's cool he's cool <laughs> so he likes party my party and every right. once in a while right right but but what about Cody Travers you know it's just I like his style. His confidence that he came out with immediately. Called yeah. Him. Well, this was a great matchup back and forth between I mean, these you two. Were jumping into a ring that was with a company that you've never been with before, mm -hmm. and had a set of kahunas to call Party Mike out. Like that's pretty cool. Look, he's looking off into the distance. I like he's, that. he's a real fan of that. <laughs> I like that. And listen, Cody Travers, an absolute. Uh, I mean, it was this was a great match between these two. Um, it was up for 50-50, in my opinion, of who's going to win. I mean, I didn't. I, mean, I knew how I was rooting for, but Party Mike has been a little bit unsuccessful here in Battle on the Border since we've seen him. He's had a few matches, and he's uh, had a few losses. But, hey, no time better than now to start winning. Yeah. Uh, I do believe, and I could be wrong about this, but I do believe that this was a heavyweight division matchup. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do believe it was. Either way, the point is, it doesn't really matter whether if it was or doesn't. I mean, it does, but because I don't know, I'm going to say it doesn't. 
Um, <laughs> but either way, it was. Will a, you make up your damn mind? <laughs> it was a great matchup between these two. Party Mike did get the victory, um, and I'm I'm glad he did. Listen, Cody Travers, I, we said it before. We'll say it again. You do you, you debut or you have a match, you lose. You just got to get back on the winning side. It doesn't mean anything about you. But what do you think's next for Party Mike? I mean, we do know that Party Mike. Yeah, I'm not sure because also I haven't seen him in a while. We haven't seen him in a while. He has been. He does do tag team wrestling in some places. Um, he does uh, some heavy, he has been a part of heavyweight matches. That's why I said, I believe this was a heavyweight division matchup. Again, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. It could be zero gravity. I do apologize. One of those two. Party Mike, zero gravity? I believe, I believe, well, Cody, I, I think he is, yeah. I, he could be. I don't remember if he was or not. I don't know if he was or not. That's what I'm saying. So I apologize for not knowing that off the top of my head. But either way, with Party Mike's victory, I mean, he can kind of choose his own path now. We're going to see him against Paxton Cowley in the future. I mean, he obviously has to get some more wins under his belt, as do someone like Madison Payne, you know, or even the DD Trash. Yeah, uh, especially in coming back. Even Matthew Taylor, really, when you look at it. I mean, really, when I say, like, well, what's Ma next? Matthew Taylor also went on a little bit of a... Losing streak there. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, when I say, like, oh, they got a win, now they should get a shot. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, like, well, what are they going to set their eyes on now? Because, you know, if you get a win, I'm sure that, I don't know, because I'm not a wrestler, but I'm assuming that boosts your confidence up. You maybe don't come become laser focused, but I mean, I think you start to think like, oh, well, I got this win. I need to start you know, thinking about what what's what's next and how to get there. So is he thinking about Paxton Callaway? Maybe Amos. I don't know. Who knows? <laughs> Ain't nobody gonna go against Amos. He won't stay. <laughs> well, we'll see. And he won't show up. Well, hey, dude, I well, spoiled it. I'm you here. spoiled it. Now, why are you spoiling it for us? Because it's irritating. Well, you know who else didn't show up? We're going to just move on. Next, Party Mike, listen, I hope whatever you want to do, I hope you do it. I'm excited for you. I can't, I, I'm excited that you're back. I hope we get to see you more. Legitimately one of my favorites. Uh, but next, was supposed to be Sergeant Ledbetter, excuse me, Ledbetter taking on Jake. Cheap. He did call you Cheap. Well, you know, I gave you the trophy to present to him. By the way, yes, congratulations to Sergeant Ledbetter, who is inducted into our Hall of Fame. I know it doesn't mean much. But we do like to show appreciation to people who have went out of their way to make us feel comfortable and to help us uh, in a lot of different ways. We kind of talked about it a little bit in that podcast uh, episode where we inducted him. But essentially, since we've been working there uh, and doing sound, he's helped us become a little bit more comfortable with doing it. We yeah. came in doing sound and we were really uncomfortable because we just it's not a business that we were used to. And he's helped us become a little bit more comfortable with it. He's been a great help. Uh, on, uh, and, and stuff behind the scenes that we won't get into super deep here, but he has been a huge help. He's even helped us with podcast ideas as far as how we kind of set up things. That's how, I, if you've noticed, like more structure. our interviews are a little bit different. It used to start off with what got you into wrestling in the beginning, and now it's what got you into wrestling near the end. It's kind of a different way to structure, mm -hmm. get to the important stuff first, and, and then, then you can get back on later. Topic later, yeah. Stuff about that, like I mean, he's been a huge help. He's uh, an extremely nice guy. I mean, legitimately one of the nicest people. So, we put him in our Hall of Fame. Like I said, doesn't mean much probably to you guys. Probably not even to him really, and all the like, all the accolades that he has. But he's going to put it with his. I don't know, no, no, I'm stuff. just I'm just saying he's he's a, been a champion in a lot of places. He's he's wrestled in some amazing matches. Uh, I'm just saying. I he's mean, even not like denim once. Yeah, now they're best friends. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Well, that's probably what makes you hate him. Yeah, like he said, I wasn't a fan of Ledbetter then. Not a fan of Ledbetter now. It's a constant. <laughs> I didn't realize that. Yeah, you... You, you know, yeah. I didn't even realize that. You kind of just always not liked Ledbetter. Ledbetter's just not been on top of my list for some reason. As you can tell, I was the one that said he should be put in the Hall of Fame. But if you remember... See, right, I was pushing for somebody else. And what happened, though? That person didn't come through, did they? They're on TV now. Hey, don't be giving away the secrets of who it might have been. Go back and look and see. <laughs> our, He's our, on TV now. Go back and look and see in our interviews who may have been on TV, who may be on TV. Point is, is that uh, I mean, they have to watch to see who's been on, maybe on TV. Yeah, go back and look. Watch all of our episodes again. Even if you watch them, watch them again. Start After from the very, movie. very beginning. Go back to the very, very first, first episode and just binge what, watch. Wasn't our first episode on here um, a Halloween special? Was that a Halloween special? Yeah, yeah, it was our first episode on YouTube. Yeah, go all the way back there and just watch it. Watch it all the way through. You can see all the changes. Mm -hmm. There's hours and hours of content on there. 109. This will be 110. Videos. I know everybody out there works. You get them headphones? I do it every day. I'm listen to our podcast. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch our podcast. I maybe. listen to another podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, point is, Sergeant Ledbetter was supposed to be taking on Jake Shepard here. And we had, at the time, we had a wager on this. 
and we'll reveal what it was. It was the Pocky One Chip Challenge. Yeah. However, Jake Shepard must have been out recruiting with Russell Act of Full Bland because he did not show up. No. For whatever reason. Now I think I have an idea. I think it's possible that he was a little nervous about taking on Sergeant Ledbetter. Hmm. He didn't show up. I don't up. think so. You don't think that at all? No. You think he wasn't he's not intimidated by Sergeant Ledbetter at all? No. You think it maybe it was because Russell wasn't going to be there and he knew that? And he thought, you know, if I can't win... Maybe they were together somewhere. That's, that's what I'm saying. Recruiting, doing that's, what job. I'm, that's what I'm saying. It could be. Either way, the point is is that he wasn't there. So, the wager's off the board. Gotten all unvoided. I'm not going to penalize Darren or myself for... We thought that, that was going to be the matchup. Jake Shepard wasn't there. He ruined you guys getting to see me or Darren potentially eat the Pocky one chip. So that's on Jake. It would have went your way. Well, if this happened. Now, see, what happened was is that a man named Travis Alexander Prophet, Travis Prophet, came out. And he said that, now, Travis, if you guys weren't there, um, Travis is a, a smaller guy. Small oh, yeah. guy. He's a bit skinny. Uh, stand sideways, you might lose him. Confused on that. Wind blows a little bit too hard, he might blow away. Yeah. Uh, you I will know, have to agree with that. Semi truck goes past him, he's a goner, he's in the wind, you know, flying with the bag, uh, plastic bags in the wind. Take a piece of paper. But he's very talented. I'm not going to take that away from Travis at a profit at all. Because, I mean, you look at some of the guys, like Justin Xavier's a pretty tall and lanky, uh, skinny guy, but he's very talented. The size advantage. Well, we don't even, <laughs> people don't know what we're talking about if they weren't there at the show. So Travis Alexander Prophet came out and said that he was the toughest and the biggest, I believe, guy uh, in Battle on the Border, which immediately got a reaction from the fans. I think that Travis Prophet may have... I, what do you think was going through his head when he did that? Why would he say something like that? Because, I mean, do you know who is back... Paxton Calloway you know. is back there. Did he not see <laughs> Paxton? And, um, you know, I don't know. Did he not see Ryan Maybe Freeman not. or Sergeant Ledbetter? Or Maybe, even Jeff King. Jeff King's in the bathroom lane. Maybe, and then Travis is like, well, I don't see anybody yeah, here who's bigger than me. me. And Travis is tall. He's a taller guy, so I'll give him that. But he is uh, a little bit skinny. Very talented again. Not taking hey, I thought he was pretty big. Travis? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, of course, because you love, you're a big fan of Travis Prophet. No, I don't, I don't know who the guy is. And, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what he was thinking when he was like, oh, yeah, I'm the biggest guy. You know, that's, it's, that's asking for some... It's bad when you don't understand. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know. It's confusing. When you're now. like, uh, try, have you seen yourself lately? Anyway, yeah, point I, is, I don't know. Point is, is that he said that, and he issued an open challenge to anyone in the back who thought that they were bigger and badder. Uh, and Sergeant Ledbetter answered the call. <laughs> uh, and Travis, I think, immediately regretted his words. He seemed like he. he I think he said no. This isn't. How, <laughs> that's not how it works, Travis. You can't call yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. Once you call it, you got. And it. then when the answer, when the person answers, you can't just say, "Ah, never mind." Uh, it's he like he I tried. was kidding. I was just joking, guys. Yeah, yeah don't work that way. Sergeant Ledbetter uh, then proceeded to call Travis uh, Prophet uh, Chicken Little. Um, so that's just again. Which, just, if you think about it, it's not very nice. Is it inaccurate though? Exactly. See, that's my thing. You don't have to like Sergeant Ledbetter. You have to admit, he hit that nail on the head right there. Yeah, at least it wasn't lying. <laughs> Tell me what I'm telling lies, right? He said, ooh, you are big. <laughs> yeah, right, right. No, he's no Jake Shepard. Which I think, if you're Sergeant Ledbetter, it's probably why he answered the call. I mean, you go into no, the Jake night... Shepard. Huh? Oh. Yeah, you go into the night thinking, like, oh, I'm going to have to take on Jake Shepard. And that's a tough ask. Jake Shepard's a big dude, talented... That's a hard. That's a hard victory. We even asked him, uh, asked Sergeant Ledbetter about Jake Shepard's uh, his match with Jake Shepard. I mean, at the time, that's what we thought was going to happen. Uh, so I think that when he saw Travis Prophet talking a lot of trash out there, I, I think he call him something along the lines of um, what did he say? It was again? Oh, I know he said Chicken Little because my grandma, who this was her first live wrestling show, loved this matchup and was rooting for you, Travis. Uh, my grandma was a huge fan of you and really wanted you to win, even though my mom tried to explain to her that's not what you're supposed to be doing right now. Sergeant Ledbetter is like the main dude in this company. My grandma was dead set on hoping Travis Prophet would win. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for Travis Prophet, and Sergeant Ledbetter did get the victory. Sergeant Ledbetter, I mean, I've said it again. I've said it before, I'll say it again. He's on at least a two-match win streak now, including this one. That was a... It's a win, though. A win's a win. I'm just saying... That better... Amos like... maybe better watch himself. <laughs> I mean... You or, gotta catch the guy first. Or maybe Paxton. I'm gonna say that every single time that Amos is mentioned. I don't think Sergeant Ledbetter... Because I've grown to not like that guy. I don't think Sergeant Ledbetter's really worried about titles right now. I think he's really just worried about kick-door promotions, specifically. I think... 
Hmm. With the, I mean, the mask guys. Have I'd kind be of, worried about him too. I'd worry about him too. About it, him. it started out. I mean, it started off. It with makes the, sense. Started off with the mask guys and Amos, and has slowly kind of transferred into. I think he still wants Amos. Kicked door promotions. Well, the I reason, mean, if you remember right, Jake Shepard did, or was Ryan Freeman tried to ruin Sergeant Lovetter's knee. Yeah. So I think there's a little bit. There's still a little bit of. I think it was Ryan Freeman who tried to hurt his knee. So there was still a little bit of. There's a resentment from that. There's still some payback. Couldn't get it here. Against uh, Jake Shepard, so it was Jake Shepard who did that. I apologize. It was Jake Shepard who who tried to ruin Sergeant Leather's career by taking his knee out, but he couldn't get the payback here. He got the payback against yeah, Ryan Freeman match. when Shark Boy was there. Uh huh. But uh, <laughs> I don't even know if that win freaking count. So that's a win. So he has at least two wins, uh, potentially more. Voided. He also beat a bunch of mask guys last year. I don't think I'm he's gonna go hand out a petition to get that voided. I, good luck, good luck. I don't think there's a lot of people. I think there's only people who are going to agree I'm with you with kick door promotions. And I'm going to pass it on down the line when the next battle on the border show. <laughs> I, I'm waiting. And I better see all your guys' signatures on there. Petition to get the Ryan Freeman and Sergeant Ledbetter match with Shark Boy as a special guest referee overturned. And then what happens then? I'll put another petition to have make sure Shark Boy's never a referee again. Whoa! I don't think you can. I mean, Denim. He'll have to show up and wrestle. I know Denim instead watches. Instead of referee it. I know Denim watches it. You're going to make Shark Boy watch? No, I said he'll have to come and wrestle and still wrestle. referee it. Wow. Damn. He wanted to wrestle anyway, so he might as well come he back and wrestle. He didn't wrestle. He, he, stopped, he stopped Ryan Freeman. He from, wanted to wrestle anyways, so he might as well just let Nick Barney come out he stopped, and referee it. And then they could have wrestled. No. They could have had a three-way. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> no. Shark Boy didn't want to wrestle. Shark Boy. Shark Boy. Shark Boy. Only got involved when Ryan Freeman was breaking the rules. I don't know. He seemed a little bit froggy. He seemed like he was ready to go. No, he's he's a shark, not a frog. Um, <laughs> he's a super, oh yeah, yeah, that's the ocean. Yeah, yeah from three thousand <laughs> leagues behind the sea. Yeah, don't start making fun of Shark Boy. Don't start making fun. What is your problem? <laughs> making fun of Shark Boy. He's one of my favorite wrestlers growing up. He's making fun of my favorite wrestler when I was a kid. You know. It's it's no wonder he was your favorite wrestler when you were a kid. What is that supposed to mean? <laughs> What, what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> I don't know, man. That's, exactly. That's an odd not character, even, that's for sure. I like, he's my favorite. My favorite. Anyway, point is, Sergeant Leather <laughs> did get the victory over Travis Prophet. My point is, is that <laughs> I don't my think point is I don't think he wants I don't think he wants a title. But if he were <laughs> to be in line for a title shot, he he probably has Hard Boy coming to get it for him. Oh my god, here we go again. Yeah, I can't deal with this. We, you know, why didn't you bring this up with Sergeant Leather when we ended up inducted him to our Hall of Fame? Why didn't you bring this up? I asked you, dude. Because you have any he was questions? already shaking his boots with um, having to go against Jake Shepard. I don't want to make him feel uncomfortable by calling him out by Shark Boy. <laughs> well, Sarge doesn't watch our podcast. <laughs> you know, anytime someone says it's hit or miss with the podcast, he doesn't listen to the podcast. And that's fine. Sergeant Leather is a busy man. I'm not expecting everyone to listen. Oh, uh, he knew an awful lot not listen to the podcast. Well, I'm sure people listen and say, well, this guy on his podcast is talking a bunch of trash about you. I hope he listens. And if he's listening, I want you to explain to him why Shark Boy, what, what Shark Boy did was not. What what's the difference between Nick coming out and reversing a decision and what Shark Boy did? You are a big fan I, of what, I, I, what Nick did. I'm not in control of any of that. I don't know. See how it changes now? He's like, I don't know about that. But then with Shark Boy, who was just trying to get Ryan I Freeman mean, to listen and, to his instructions. Well, that's Nick Barney didn't go out and put people in headlocks. <laughs> he didn't put him in headlocks. All right, he, well, he didn't shark bite him. <laughs> shark bite him. Then. <laughs> you shark bite him. Okay, this isn't about. Isn't shark that like a signature move? Dude. Yeah, <laughs> so he, he went out there to freaking well, wrestle. If you listen, listen to him, and you want, I bet Nick would put someone in a headlock if they didn't listen to him. If they put, if Nick no, got, usually he's, well, that's, that's going to be the design of the shirt. Is Nick doing this? Says, Nick says no. <laughs> All right, but I'm sure he could if he wanted to. I'm I'm 100 percent sure about that. My, but it's a referee. My point You're is, not this isn't about shark. Them. What is your deal with shark? You're supposed to the monitor. Shark board is not at sun and get between. You all bringing them up. You're obsessed. But because they're all, all counting as a win, no, no, no on a win streak. He's yeah, got one. Else he got wins one. For you. I'm saying he got one victory against Kickdoor Promotions. You know what? He tried to get a mm -hmm. second one, but Travis Prophet had to talk a bunch of trash that he couldn't back up because Sergeant Lumber is a little bit bigger than he is. Mm. Now, Travis Prophet could be great for the Zero Gravity. Yeah. Could really be great for the Zero Gravity. Oh, uh, it's not on Sergeant Lumber's level, though, yet. Not yet, at least. Mm, say, maybe if he eats his Wheaties. Give him some greens. 
He likes another green, from what I uh, understood about his mm. when they when they introduced him. Another green he's a fan of ayahuasca. <laughs> yeah, it's a different, go promoting drugs again. Different type of uh, <laughs> a different type of drug, I believe, is what his favorite is. Um. Anyway, point is. Great matchup though, starting a little better to get the victory. Now we're moving on. Drugs a different kind of drug. To our moving on to our main event, it was Paxton. Main event. Paxton Callaway came out first, and it was a champion versus champion match. Titles were on the line, to my knowledge, but it was supposed to be a champion versus championship match, which is rare in Battle on the Border. We don't see that often, nope. so it was very exciting to see it. Paxton Callaway came out first. Amos, we were waiting for him multiple times. Sergeant Ledbetter had to come out and say that. We haven't seen him. He was there. Now he's gone. He, where well, I don't know where he went. We're trying to find him. We gave him ample opportunity um, to come out. We played his music over and over. He did not I mean, come how out. Ricky looked confused. I mean, well, like, we, we he was supposed to be there. We don't normally see Amos at shows. He kind of shows up whenever he wants to because yeah. that's his thing. He, in there, I mean, last show he left mid middle of a match. He leaves when he wants to. He comes up when he wants to. He doesn't. He's not sitting in the back in the locker room because Denim would take care of him, you know, Sergeant Ledbetter would take care of him, the locker room would take care of him, so he sneaks in and out, so that's fair, but he apparently was there, hmm. and then was gone, from what I understand, Sergeant that Ledbetter said that he was there, and then he left, maybe he got cold feet, I mean, listen, if I was going up against Paxton Callaway, 7 foot 4, 400 pounds, or 7 foot tall, 400 pounds, I probably wouldn't want to get in the ring with him, so you that's know, fair. I wouldn't either, but what I'm do you good on that, because it's a up like a basket. <laughs> yeah, Shoot right, you. right, yeah, he could. So, I mean, I don't blame Amos necessarily, but it was very disappointing. But don't worry, there were two other people from earlier in the night who tried to take advantage of the Paxton Callaway uh, situation there, and that was Matthew Taylor and Ryan Freeman. This is why extreme I said earlier, duo. they came out. That's what they think they're tag team. Extreme, extreme duo. duo. They were, they were, they were yeah. coming out and they tried to surround Paxton Callaway. This is why I said earlier, though, about them potentially being a new team. Because, I mean, this is a big... You know, they probably did it because everybody was assuming he was going to do it. You ever thought about that? What do you mean? He probably jumped down to help to do that because everybody assumed Matthew Taylor was going to anyways. He's like, fine, if they want it, I'm going to give it to him. Well, no, I don't think anyone was expecting that. Run out there and... I wasn't expecting Rough somebody up. I was. I think you rough were. Rough my big. Rough them up. <laughs> you're, 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 you were expecting it. Now, it's also possible that these guys were just conveniently together you know as a tag team and thought hey this is the world champion we both want to be world champion let's go for let's help them out you know let's go get them. this is our chance but don't worry sunman showdown fans and battle on the border fans are all alike that wasn't going to happen on jeff That's king fans that wasn't going to happen on <laughs> jeff king's watch oh that guy again jeff king came out and made the save essentially i mean i think paxton Callaway. Uh, he wasn't getting attacked yet, but they did have him surrounded. I mean, Ryan Freeman, big dude. He's one of the, I mean, he's one that can actually challenge Paxton in size and weight. Still not as big as Paxton Callaway, but I'm it's at least a little bit one, bigger. We've only seen one person even get him off the ground. Yep, Shane Mercer is the only person we've ever seen to do that. Now, and that was impressive. It was very impressive. Mm -hmm. see, Shane, and see, and that's the thing. Shane Mercer mm -hmm. and Paxton Callaway kind of teased at the, last, at the end of the last show mm -hmm. uh, that in Clarksville that maybe they were going to get to see him. Shane Mercer wasn't here today. So, I mean, Paxton's on his own. And listen, yep. if you're a world champion, you don't really have a lot of friends. So it's a huge, huge deal that Jeff King came out to support Paxton Callaway in this moment. I mean, Jeff King could have easily just let the world champion get beaten down and look the other way, and it wasn't his deal. He didn't yeah. have to do that, but he did. And now, listen, he got choked out earlier. He came out still kind of groggy. I mean, he was still kind of wearing off the effect. I mean, I'm sure getting... And listen, he wanted to pay back on Ryan Freeman, too. Oh, yeah. It was a little bit less about Paxton Callaway. I'm sure that had a play into it, but it was more about getting back at Matthew Taylor and Ryan Freeman, for sure. Uh, so, now we have a new tag team match. I mean, they, they, they talked over it. And Bobby Fulton, I know you don't like him, Bobby Fulton, though, he came out there and said, let's do a tag team match right now. They And it was official. Denim made it official. It was a tag team match. Paxton Callaway and Jeff King taking on Matthew Taylor and Ryan Freeman. I mean, that's amazing. Oh, we yeah. went from having a one-on-one -on -one championship versus, or champion versus champion match to an amazing tag team match between four amazing competitors. Jeff King making well, his debut. say it. His re-debut in 15 years. Four big men slapping meat. Four Isn't big men slapping meat. Matthew Taylor's not exactly like a big dude. Me. Matthew Taylor's not exactly... I wouldn't consider him a big dude slapping meat, but I would consider him a fantastic competitor slapping meat, which sounds even worse. My <laughs> fantastic competitor slapping meat. <laughs> my point is... Competitive slapping meat. <laughs> my point is is that this was going to be... Slapper. 
<laughs> well, okay, now. Now, see, we're going back. We need to stop right where we're at. <laughs> Matthew Taylor is a fantastic competitor, and this was going to be a great match. He's kind of the wild card when you think about it. Paxton Callaway, Jeff King, Ryan Freeman, all three big dudes. Mm -hmm. Uh, Matthew Taylor, and not exactly the biggest Matthew team. Taylor. Yeah, he's been in, he's been in zero gravity matches in the past. But let me tell you something that again we talked about it before, and it kind of could have talked about it in Travis Prophet versus Sergeant Ledbetter if you weren't so obsessed with Shark Boy. Sometimes the speed Look, can dude. outdo the size. <laughs> Sometimes the speed can outdo the size. So I mean, Matthew Taylor had something going for him here, and like I said, he's also very smart, very cunning. Yeah. So it was a great matchup. It was very it was what cunning. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I bet you did. <laughs> I'm gonna say wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was a fantastic match between these two. Paxton Callaway and Jeff King did get the victory. How do you feel That's about expected. that? That's expected. Expected? Why do you think it's expected? Look, the size difference. There is a big size difference. I yeah. mean, if you see the size difference, you got this and this and hey. then this. Oh, it's more like this. Yeah. It was, I don't know what you're doing there, but yeah. Like, this is the tag team, that the big tag team. This is the big small one. Oh, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was, I mean, listen, it was a great matchup between these two. Jeff King was able to get the victory, I believe, for his team. I apologize if that's not true because it's been a week and a half since, uh, a little behind the scenes, it's been a week and a half since the show, so I don't exactly remember. But I do believe Jeff King was able to get the victory for his team. If not, it was Pax Cowley. The point is, they won. So that's a huge victory. And listen, I got the W. Amos, I mean, you, you're even starting to turn on Amos a Yeah, little bit. I don't know what his plan is. I don't know what his, just stick him off the roster. Whoa! I mean, hey, I I think if you're running if you're running from uh, if you're running from your matches, I think that it does irritate people. Forfeit the belt. But there is a show potentially coming up in the future that's hard to escape the the ring. If he shows with all. Hey, I mean that's the thing about being a champion. I mean, really, that's the thing. We, we, you know, that's the thing about being a champion. I mean, Roman Reigns didn't defend his title every show, you know, in WWE. So he's taking that route. I think he just got to. I mean, listen. What does it do for Amos to be in it? I don't know why I'm defending him. I don't know, I don't know why I'm defending him. <laughs> I just not thought of it. Wait a minute. Like you're wanting Amos to win. <laughs> Wait a minute. No, I'm just saying that I don't... I'm just saying, I guess from his perspective, this is what he's thinking. I don't agree. I think he should be there and be a be a, be a man and take on Paxton Cavalier. Act like a champion. Act like a champion. Exactly. See, it, we, that's finally something we can agree on. Watershed moment in this podcast. My hands are sweaty, so I had to yeah. wipe them off. Uh, <laughs> watershed. Uh, listen, Sunday Showdown. Great show. Fantastic. Can I, I, As I always. Appreciate everybody for coming out. Appreciate Battle on the Border for coming to Sunman, Indiana. It was a really surreal moment to uh, to hear Sunman Showdown be said by Rick Toms. It was an absolutely great show. It means a lot to me. In fact, we got Rick Toms at Sunman's cool, too. I know. Every time I thought about that, I was, I was like, oh my God, Sergeant Ludwig is in Sunman? Oh, Rick Toms is in Sunman? Oh, yeah, it was a great show. And don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, you won't have to wait too much longer by the time this podcast comes mm -hmm. out because there's another show right around the corner, June 22nd. Yeah, right, right over there, right over there. Oh, June say. 22nd, <laughs> Legends and All-Stars, right back where we go, Cleves, Ohio, mm -hmm. my favorite place. I love going to Cleves. It feels like a home game. I like Cleves. Home crowd. The fans are amazing. Fans are great. Fans are great everywhere we go, but in Cleves, there's just that extra little, you know? It's I don't like, know if it's the echo or just the fans in general. Fans are just louder. That place gets loud. Fans are just louder, I think, in Cleves. I mean, in the actual the echo enclosed box. Yeah, exactly. But the still point is, is it's great. The crowds are great. The action's always great. And I'm excited. To, and, and we already have a couple matches as of this moment that are being released. By the time that you're watching this, there may be more. Yeah. But we have two matches that have been confirmed. One of those matches is Shane Douglas returning finally. We haven't seen him in a while uh, since New Year's Eve Bash uh, when he took on Brandon Day. What do you think you're doing there? My hip. Oh, my gosh. Shane does not watch our podcast, I can guarantee it. But if he is, I give you full-fledged, you have the right to do whatever you need to do to this guy. And in fact, I think we all would like to. You can't disrespect the king like that. Uh-uh. I said myself as soon as I said it. As soon as I said it. No. You can't disrespect a legend like that. Okay? I'll say, you know who the king is. Yeah, I know. As soon as I said it, dude, I knew it. A, a legend. A legend. That's better. Shane Douglas is finally back, so though. Brandon treating Brandon Day like that. How so, dare you? I know, I know, I know. Crazy. You should be ashamed. Man, I hope he puts you through a table. <laughs> Shane oh, Douglas well. is going to put you through a table. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shane Douglas is finally back, though, making Maybe his we'll return. We will both get thrown through a table. Pro That'd one be pretty cool. One of these days. <laughs> Shane Douglas is finally back, though. He's going to be taking on Jeff King. Jeff King had his impressive de de re-debut, technically. 
since you know in the last 15 years. Now it, that was against Ryan Freeman. He had a loss, has a win, so he's one and one in his overall. Take on Shane Douglas. That's a huge opportunity. That's confusing. Now, if Shane Douglas were to get a victory here, I think that he would probably again a hardcore division is pretty. There's a lot of people, a lot of moving parts. So I think Shane, especially after losing to Brandon Day, and this is a confusing match. I think it's it's. I mean, I love it. I think it's That's great. Confusing. Why is it confusing to you? I mean, you think about it. Think about it this way: Jeff King, one and one in his re debut. Fans last, love him. Fans love him. Shane Douglas. Fans love him. Yeah, fans love him. But he's also kind of re debuting, not re debuting, but he's returning. I'm gonna say, hold up. Well, re-debuting. that was the wrong way to word it. What I meant was, I was he's, he's a legend. He is. No, I didn't mean re re debuting. He's returning from the Brandon Day match that took place at New Year's Eve Bash. That was a very tough. Loss for him. Still I mean, very confusing. it was a very long, hard fought battle between those two. Fans are going to be conflicted. Fans are going to be conflicted, and I think I think it's just a show of respect between these two, you know, these two guys. I mean, it's a legend taking on uh, Jeff King, a local legend. I, I would dare to say, with the crowd reaction he got in Summon. So, I mean, I'm super excited to see this. I don't even know who I want to win. Here's what I worry about, though. You see. Jeff King coming up, coming back from after 15 years, one on one. He's going to be riding high after that tag team victory. Yeah. Shane Douglas though, he's coming back with a vengeance. I mean, he got beaten by take it out on him. He got beaten out by a student essentially. I mean, that was kind of the whole idea with the franchise with with, with Brandon Day and, and Shane Douglas was that it was kind of student teacher type deal. Mm-hmm. And now Brandon Day, he beat his teacher. Hmm. He beat it, and now he's the teacher. We see him talking about this, you know, on Shane. Empire or whatever he's calling it. Look again. So I don't know. I just this is cool. I, he's just cool, dude. I think it's interesting. I think it's a very, very interesting matchup. And then we have, and this one's going to be tough because of the YouTube algorithm. So I really hope. Uh, I want to make this clear that there's going to be a word. I don't know how this works with the YouTube algorithm, but there is a wrestler that has a name that you're not allowed to say on YouTube. I am going to say it. It is just a wrestler's name. So I hope this video doesn't get banned, or otherwise we're going to have to figure out a different way to say this guy's name. But the zero grab, this is the match of the night. It could potentially be, it's going to be my favorite. We'll get back to that, because match of the night, we got to talk about Summit Showdown's or match of the night. But this could be potentially the match of the night. It is Justin Xavier, the zero gravity t- champion, taking on Suicide. Now, if you guys don't know who that is, I'm only going to say it once. <laughs> if you don't know who that is, he is a former TNA uh, X Division champion, I believe. Was he was a huge. Well, it's a wrestler's name, and I can't. I can't help the YouTube Our algorithm. Level. I can't even say they were <laughs> algorithm. I I, was, I can't help it, man. You have to say unalived nowadays instead of the actual. Well, word. I can't say unalived. That's not his name. Self unalived. <laughs> self assisted. That's unalived. how I, I was hoping we'd be on here. So that when we do oh, the review, self unalived. It was Jeff. And, it was Justin Xavier versus self unalived. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And say that. <laughs> that is suicide. Why is the algorithm gotta be so stupid? Okay. Anyway, point is if you don't you're know dumb. you're dumb. If you don't know who that <laughs> is, the man that Justin Saber's taken on, I gotta be careful. Gotta start reading up on the rules for how that works. Self uh, alive. It is it is gonna be a high pace match. I mean, he was a former he was in TNA, former X Division champion. If you ever played the TNA Impact video game, they made the video game about him. He used to come down on a zip line to the ring. I got to see him in person live. Uh, at a, at a t- that would be cool impact show. Yeah, he was a very Just very. Slide in on a zip I line. I recommend you look him up. I think you would really love his style. I think I need to get installed on a zip line the next show. <laughs> Whoa, I don't know about all that now. Uh, we all right, do. Then. <laughs> I can see your credit card. Yeah, I okay. gotta get a zip line. Listen, don't give him the credit card. He's, he, he, he says he's going to go buy a zip line. He's going to go, go buy, buy a kick door sticker. I was about to say, he's going to buy a kick door decal. Uh, oh, is there a $15,000 card on my credit card? Yeah, I just got a kick door promotion to drop in my car. Pretty yeah. cool, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it's going to be a great show, though. So, those are the two matches Justin Xavier versus Suicide, and then Jeff King. Unalive. Take- <laughs> so, unalive. And then Jeff King taking on uh, the legend, uh, Shane Douglas. So it's going to be very exciting. That is June twenty second. Legendary. Cleves, Ohio. Legends and All Stars. It's fitting that he's on Legends and All Stars. Legends is in the name. And what's the All Stars? Uh, Jeff King. Ah. <laughs> in that in that scenario, and listen, that's just the two matches that we got right now. By the time this comes out, there will almost guaranteed be at least one more. Oh, I, there have to be at least one more. And I saw Denim on Facebook say you probably saw it too. I don't know if you're still friends with him on Facebook after. Yeah, I'm still since, friends with him. I still got <laughs> updates. He said on his personal Facebook page that he was extremely excited about this next show. Of course he is. 
but he I'm just saying he's the one that makes he's the one that makes the decisions here and I, of course he's excited about every show oh yeah on the double D podcast I'm the one that makes decisions wait a minute this is a 50 50 this uh, is not just a 100 yet yeah. even though I everyone replace you no if anyone gets replaced in this show it's you I, we've been told I, I I've probably been told that you need to be replaced about 20 different times the only times it wasn't I think was members of kick door come kick on door. Here, do a podcast with me all right you know what hey I'll tell you what if you can make that work, if you can make a review work I'll with Kick Door Promotions, you can very, very gladly, for the next show or whatever show in the future, do a Kick Door Promotions special where they review a show with you. I will let that happen. Hey, if you're able you to make it now. happen, if you're, you're able to make here. it happen, I will let it happen. I won't You've even. I won't, I won't be there. I'll be holding the camera. Cue card guy. <laughs> cue card guy behind us because we've been reading off cue cards this whole time. He is going to be me. Thank you for doing that, by the way. Um, no, it, yeah, yeah, he's. What are, you, what are you doing? Where'd you go? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my point is... I'm trying to read what's next. <laughs> it's gonna, yeah, anytime there's been a lull on the podcast, because our cue card guy's getting his finger... He's, he's, he's getting tired back there's here. There's no cue card, card guy back here. No, very clearly. Um, Great show. Make if sure he was, there. he'd be running. Yeah, it'd be a tough, be a tough job. June 22nd. Make sure there are Cleves, Ohio, River's Edge, June Sports 22nd. Complex, Indoors Sports be Complex. Be there or be square. Be there or be wrong. I think really. it's, an, it's June 22nd. Is that on is that on Saturday? Saturday? <laughs> yeah, yes, it's on a Saturday. I know there's All a Sunday the show coming up. Well, not this one. Mm -hmm. Not this one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought it was. Not this one, brother. I thought it was, brother. No, see, Saturday, June 22nd at 6 p.m. Legends and All Stars. Saturday. I thought that was. I don't know. For, for some reason, I remember looking at the calendar. I thought it was on Sunday. <sighs> <sighs> anyway, June 22nd, be there because he, wa he wasn't going to be. Apparently, I was going to show up the next day. Saturday, <laughs> right, sound. Let's do it. Saturday, June 22nd is going to be a great show. As you can tell by the two matches that we already have announced, it's going to be great. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's going to be many more to come. So make sure you follow Battle on the Border on Facebook. You can go to Battle on the Border Pro Wrestling on Facebook. And you can follow them. You can also join the BOTB Brigade to get up. Uh, you can connect with fans. You I'm can... still a member of the Brigade. Yeah, you shouldn't be. We should kick you out. They ain't kicked me out yet. <laughs> Denim, get, get rolling on that. Kick him out of the Brigade. He's nope. no longer a part of it. Nope. Uh, going to be uh so yeah you can go there battle on the border pro wrestling on facebook BOTB brigade we also have social medias you can go to our instagram the double d d double underscore d underscore podcast on instagram you can follow me on twitter dj dub on zero zero on twitter uh, i tweet about wrestling sometimes and, and some other things dj others. dub on zero zero dj dub zero zero on x is now called sorry xer so what are you xing now yeah well is it's post twitter? posting Post. Posting instead of tweeting. Instead of t tweeting, it's posting now, yeah. Uh, you can also follow us on TikTok. We haven't actually talked about our TikTok in a while. Cause, hey, uh, the TikTok's a thing. We can go live on it. We can go live <laughs> on it. We never have, really, but we can. <laughs> uh, follow us on TikTok, WD Podcast, uh, on, on TikTok. All that just is in the description below. All of our social media is in the description below. We also have an email, WDPodcast123 at gmail.com. Which, by the way, you have to check. I hate to out you publicly on this, but uh, you have to check that because... There's a potential for something pretty major that we could be doing. I looked at the other day and didn't nothing, see anything. Nothing yet? Okay. Yeah. Hey, well, we're hoping. We're, hoping <laughs> I looked the other we're day going, and didn't see we're going all out. We're not going to say what it is. I guess I'll check after the video. We're not going to say what it is, but there is something potentially major going on on the show. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Maybe or maybe not. Probably not. But maybe. Probably. We're trying. All right. We're trying. Doubtful. Be for sure it'd be cool if it did. Yeah, and then say your line. <laughs> huh? Say your line. The line you look forward to the whole time. And if you just love me, add my snap. Down one, one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can also now get it down below. Yep. Um, <clears throat> that's the only reason they're gonna click down there. Is to get your Snapchat. That, they wouldn't follow nothing else. Well, wow. Okay. <laughs> um, make sure you guys go to the show. It's gonna be great. I'm trying to think. There was something else I wanted to say. Oh, we have some great episodes coming up. We have uh, an interview lined up with somebody. We're gonna keep it a surprise because it yeah. turns out that in the past. <clears throat> We've said someone was going to be interviewed soon, and then it fell through. Mm -hmm. and I don't want to deliver on false promises because these people are busy, and we're busy too. So sometimes things get mixed up. So I'm not going to say who it is, but it is going to be somebody. Uh, we also announced on our last podcast episode that there will be a third member into the Hall of Fame that is a non-wrestler who we want to thank for their their, their services. That'll be coming yeah, up at some point this month. <clears throat> what? I don't know when we're wanting to do that. But that's going to uh, be pretty soon. Hopefully. It's going to be coming up in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Uh, it's going to be great. So stay tuned. And are they if, getting a cool trophy too? They are getting a cool trophy. 
cool. We're gonna be cool trip. We're gonna have three members. Because for three years. By the way, we've been doing this podcast officially for three years. Last episode. Whoa. You know, That's mind blowing. April twenty fifth, twenty twenty one is when we started. Be fully honest, I didn't expect it to last a year. Now, <laughs> now, we're, now we're working for Battle on the Border, and you're disrespecting Jeff King and disrespecting Shane Douglas, and it's just an absolute. Who are you gonna root for in that match, by the way? I'm just along for the show. Fair enough. <laughs> All right. That's why I'm confused. Right. right, right. <laughs> yeah, because you don't know who to root for now. Well, make sure you like, comment, share with your friends and family. Nah, they don't know how to hit a like button. And subs- thank you guys for watching. They so you, they, they, they can, at least some of them can hit the subscribe button. That's impressive. Well, make sure you hit the like button. Because, you know, it helps us. They don't it helps know how us. to hit the like button. It helps what us. that little bell? It helps us in the algorithm. You think they get You like it, subscribe, and comment. You can even comment just like, how are you guys doing? You, or you, just you, comment like if you want. Yeah, just comment. Just if something. you don't know how to hit the button, you just, <laughs> just comment like. You just hit the little button up to scroll to the bottom, hit it. Because it and helps then us. type it in, and then you hit the little, like, there's a little button, a, a send button type deal. You hit that, and a boom. Yeah. If you, if you like our content, like and comment and subscribe. It helps us in the mm-hmm. algorithm. It gets us exposed to more people. Yeah. So if you like us, do us a favor. Do us a solid, brother. All right. We'll see you guys. I Bye. I got some end. <laughs>